Hi folks, good to be with you. Uh, just a short video. Uh, my name is Jason, it's good to be with you. Uh, please look up my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com, my Facebook and Twitter. And it's good to be with you. Um, I just want to uh, do a diary really um, of my reading of a biography of Mohammed. Uh, and um, it, it's probably one of the earliest, uh, one of the earliest lives of Muhammad. It's the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishaq, and it's translated by a uh, Gelum, G U G U I W L A U M E, published by Oxford. Uh, so it's Ibn Ishaq, and it's the life of Muhammad. Um, and this life of Muhammad, um, he was born, Ibn Ishaq was born 704, and died 767, or maybe 761. Um, so it's a very important... Um, it's a very important biography of Muhammad. Now, we don't, as far as I know, I might be wrong, so, you know, I'm not an expert on this, so the whole point of this before I go into it is I'm just reading this, uh, doing my own research, and I, and I just want to share uh, in my diary, uh, like a, a, a vlog, a uh, vlog, a vlog diary, my reaction to reading this biography and what I get out of this biography. And I'm looking at it principally as a historian, looking at it how Islamic history was produced and comparing that Islamic history to the Gospels and to other ancient history. Uh, so it's an exercise really looking at early Islamic sources and comparing them with other sources. and. I'm doing it in an objective way. I'm looking at the material uh, in an objective way. Even though I'm, I'm reading uh, Christian material that critiques this material, I am looking at this source material uh, as on its own terms uh, and looking at it, trying to get in the mind of the writer, trying to get in the mind of uh, Ibn Ishaq, trying to look at it from his perspective and why he's using the sources on, and how he's using the sources and what he's saying. So, so that's where I'm coming from really. So it, 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 it's an interest, I think this video really is an interest in, in really to those who are truth seekers, who, who, who want to seek truth, you know, and, and who are open to questions and who are open to be challenged. So. <clears throat> Um, Ibn Ishaq, uh, there are, in, as we go back into history, there are Muslim scholars of the time um, uh, just There are uh, Muslim scholars of the time that had issues with this writer. Uh, there are reports that he was uh, involved in some kind of uh, sexual misconduct with some woman. Um, there are issues with there are um, we haven't got the full biography, so it, it comes mediated through. Al, I think, Baki's copy and Ibn Hisham's copy, and even they edited, um, edited uh, Ibn Ishaq's material. We have a scholar called Ali uh, Dahabi, and there was an earlier scholar, I think, called Malik, who said that this writer could not be trusted. Okay. So, in other words, there are 
questions about what is the original material of this writer, has the writing been edited, uh, there are bits of this material preserved in Tobari, uh, and the biography that I have got, which has been published by Oxford University, um, is a mishmash of various bits of this biography that have been preserved in other writers like Tobari and uh, other writers. Uh, if that's the case, then the first point is that if one is to be very sceptical about Islamic sources, if this is one of the earliest sources of, of, of Muhammad, if it's true that we haven't got a full biography, an original copy, or a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of this biography, but that this biography is mediated by other writers, edited by other writers after this writer. Um, and the same goes with Tabari. Uh, then one has to question what is the original part of, of um, Ibn Ishaq's biography and what is not. So that's a huge, huge scholarly hurdle to jump. So if, uh, if, if you're... If, if you give the benefit of the doubt that this is good source material, you've still got this huge hurdle to say, well, which bits are the original of Ibn Ishaq and which are not? Which have been edited? Why has it been edited? A lot of scholarship would have to be done to clear that up. And that's my first point. Um, so I'll go on to the uh, to the biography that I've been reading. Yeah, uh, Malik said Ibn Ishaq is one of the most dishonest frauds. Therefore, we expelled him from Medina, the city of Ibn Ishaq. Uh, there are sources that seem to contradict this biography. Uh, Al-Shahabi, a student, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a writer uh, in the early time of uh, Ibn Ishaq said that there was no recorded history really of, uh, of, of, of Islam before Muhammad. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But the point, point now I want to get at is this, is that we have scholars, early scholars, early writers attacking Ibn Ishaq, saying he's not reliable. We have some scholars at the time saying that why are you looking beyond the before the life of Muhammad because there wasn't much material there anyway and if it is you should look at it from a Jewish perspective. So these contradict Ibn Ishaq who is now given a biography. So that's the second issue. We've not only got the editorial issue, we've got the ed issue of the contemporaries. Now I'm willing to waver all this. I'm willing to put aside the editing of the biography. I'm willing to put aside the criticisms of contemporaries, forgive me for the fall. I'm willing to put aside uh, the criticism of the contemporaries. Um, so let's get into uh, some thoughts about the biography. Forgive me. Um, there are other sources, early sources, uh, but this is one of the primary sources, this biography, okay? Um,
Yeah, so... Right about page 5, there's a mention of a kind of dream. And the king wants his dream to be interpreted and he sends for people. Uh, I felt that was kind of borrowed from the life of Joseph and borrowed from the book of Daniel. So there seems to be, uh, when there's writing of history, sometimes it seems that this is a prior to Muhammad, this king's story is prior to Muhammad. But it seemed as if it was borrowed from Joseph or borrowed from Daniel. Um, that's around about page five and six. It mentions in per, right about page 31 the gospel and I found that very interesting. Uh, there's actually a reference within the biography. This is I've only read up to about a hundred pages, uh, so about a quarter of the biography. But it also mentions in the biography that prophets were given and that a covenant was given of the prophets and the covenant was ratified with scripture. So that, I found that very interesting because uh, the Muslims, when you quote to the Muslims and say, well, the Quran teaches that the Bible, um, the Quran teaches that the Bible is, uh, the Word of God, uh, I'm going to get the reference. Yeah, so the, 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 you said to a Muslim, the Quran teaches that the, the Bible is the Word of God, and it mentions Injil and Torah, and the Muslim will say, well, you know what? When it mentions Injil, it's not actually a gospel as in the Word. It's just oral. And you can have Torah as the Word. And it's interesting that... Uh, I think if you look at page 64 of the book, and um, just trying to look at it, I think I've got the reference. Yeah, page 93. No, 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 sorry. Page 76, that's the key. Page 76, that's the key for the, of the biography there. Page 76, covenant and scripture that I've put. In the biography, it, it states that prophets were given covenants and the covenants were ratified with scripture. Every prophet was given uh, a prophethood and that prophethood was given a covenant and the covenant was coming, comes from scripture. I think that I thought, well, to myself, that I thought to myself, well, that's borrowed from the Bible. The Bible in the Old Testament talks about covenant ratified with scripture. But well, that contradicts, this contradicts, page 76, contradicts the whole interpretation and narrative of Islamic apologetics that says that when it says in the Quran, Injil, that Injil is just oral tradition. Because this biography is saying right at the beginning, as far as he's concerned, that prophethood was ratified by scripture, ratified by covenant, which was ratified by scripture. I thought that was very interesting. The other thing as well is two words that come out early in the biography, and I've only read 100 pages, is the word apostleship and gospel, which again is completely different the way Muslim apologists today approach the issue of prophethood concerning Muhammad, because they will talk about prophethood, whereas this biography not only mentions prophethood, but also mentions that Muhammad is an apostle. And I found that very interesting. And, and what does the writer, the biographer, mean by an apostle? And what do Islamic apologies say about Muhammad being an apostle? Because in the Bible, there are two, two types of apostle. The apostle as in church planter, messenger church planter. But an apostle saw Jesus die and rose again. So I think this is language borrowed from Christianity but without any real content, the word apostle. Um, 
I think one of the things that, a couple of things that come out in this biography is there's not an actual lot of information about Muhammad. What we get is a lot of genealogy, which uh, there was no indication of any evidence to substantiate the genealogy, and the genealogy going back to Adam, and there were all these names of Adam's children uh, who, who we've never heard of. Um, and I wonder, uh, uh, so you have these genealogies, but then you also have these poems, and these long poems. And then in the midst of the genealogies and the long poems and, and the history of these various tribes fighting, you have these little bit of gems, little bits of information about Muhammad. And that information, one has to uh, question whether it's accurate or not, because uh, sometimes in the narration, the writer says, uh, nobody knows but Allah. And then he'll say, I get it from such a person. He'll name the person. Who got it from such a person. But doesn't name the person. So you're led to believe that this is accurate source material. Because it was given by, say, John or, or Jack. <laughs> but Jack got it from somebody who we don't know. So you hear the word Jack. But then he says, I got this from Jack. And Jack got it from somebody who knows who. So you you led to give you, you you led into a false sense of security because the writer seems to be getting his source from somebody, but then admits that the source that he got it from uh, there's no one behind that that original source, and that's one of his contemporaries uh, were questioning him on this, and later Islamic scholars were questioning on him. On this and that's why a lot of Islamic scholars today are a bit dubious to use this writer for biographies of Muhammad today as source material um, so but it what's interesting it's one of it's one of the earliest it's one of the earliest biographies and yet it cannot trace, uh, so far I've counted about two or three very important references to Muhammad. And he quotes the source, but then he gives the name of the person he's using, but then admits that the person who he's using got it from somebody else, but he doesn't name that person. So what that tells me is uh, the accuracy of early history, history of, of the life of Muhammad was not as sure or accurate as Muslim apologies make out today. Um, th so those are some of the points that come out really so far. The issue of Muhammad, um, th there's, in order to justify Muhammad being a prophet, there's stories about there are rabbis and Christians that confirmed before he was even born that a prophet would come. One is dubious whether this is the case or not. Uh, how does one prove that? It seems as if they're put in to give the future prophethood of Muhammad some kind of authority that he is a prophet. Um, and what is cons so what is conspicuous is you have these genealogies, you have a lot of um, poems, but then in the midst you have these little gems of bits about Muhammad. So really what I see is a lot of padding. There's a lot of padding and there isn't much information really about Muhammad. Uh, the information that we have is very sparse and some of it is irrelevant. For example, uh, there's a story about uh, that when he was a baby, a so-called story that the, those who adopted, who were to suckle him and, and, and look after him, because uh, when, when they were children, uh, that they, they were given to nurses who would look after them. And apparently uh, this nurse, a camel was, was flowing with milk, while everybody else's camels were not flowing with milk. 
won't be home for because of the halo. He's, this little boy is going to baby is going to be a prophet, and I'm suckling the prophet. Uh, so that's an irrelevant story. It's only a story that is relevant to show that some kind of divine issue, according to the Islamic source, is 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 there that there's some kind of divine uh, issue going on. Uh, so there's a lot of irrelevant detail that just is not relevant to the life of Muhammad um, and is there just to buttress the story that he is a prophet so it, it begs the question whether it is actually really historical information or not uh, and how do we determine whether it's historical information or not uh, the other issue that comes out is I was thinking is where, where, where is the um, secular confirmation of some of the early details of the life of Muhammad? For example, when the Gospel of Luke's writing, he mentions secular historians, uh, secular uh, issues. Which can be, like for example, he, he mentions Herod, he mentions, uh, he mentions uh, various emperors, etc. And we can confirm these outside of the Gospel of Luke by other historical writers like Josephus. So what, what, uh, what contemporary secular historians were around and have written that confirm the early part of the biography of Mohammed, and I'm, I'm not so sure that, I, I don't think there is any, but there might be, but I don't think there is much evidence to confirm the historical veracity, whereas in the Gospel of Luke and the Gospels, there's lots of contemporary write, writings that, that outside the Bible that confirm various aspects of the Bible in terms of the Gospels and the life of Jesus. Um, there's a, quite a bit about jinn in the early part of the biography and it's interesting that uh, writers, uh, that, that people uh, who were supposed to be spiritual according to this biographer, biographer before the time of Muhammad uh, used a jinn to fight battles with and, and used and there's and there's a lot of issues about jinn uh, concerning the revelation and the prophethood of, of Muhammad and apart from the reference about angels that two angels sat by him when he was a boy or something or early in his youth or adulthood uh, and the monk so-called confirms this. It principally focuses on jinn, evil spirits. And now there was religion at the time of Muhammad that specifically focused on evil spirits. And it seems as if that the biographer is unwittingly um, passing on that really Muhammad and early Islamic development really was based on a, a number of sources. We know like Christian source, Jew, Jewish source, Zoroastrianism, Gnosticism. But here uh, on the issue of jinn there was a religion uh, at the time that focused on the jinn. And so this biographer is unwittingly attesting to the fact that because the early source of the Muhammad's life was focused on the issue of jinn, it shows you that there's been a borrowing of that particular religion at the time of Muhammad because they focused on jinn, evil spirits. Um, so I think, yeah, so, so to recap some of the issues that I have with this biography, it's been edited by early writers. We don't have a full copy, so it's been edited by writers 
um, not so long after Ibn Ishaq, they edited the material. Then we have more edited material a long time later in Tubari, many hundreds of years later. On top of this, we have issues that contemporaries of Ibn Ishaq saw that he was not a man to be trusted. On top of this, we have Islamic scholars uh, up, up to the 14th century uh, clearly state that they believed that his, had, uh, his material was not worthy of being at, in the Hadith tradition uh, and there was broken chain within his, in his work. Um, so we have the editing of the biography, the attacking of the character of the writer, we have the not being accurate in his sources. We, we've seen ourselves, uh, I've seen myself that when he quotes sources, it, it's an illusion because behind his source quotation, there's no source actually at the bottom of it. We've seen padding, whereas padding it with genealogy and poems, but there's very little historical information. We've seen historical stories where they are gathered from biblical stories to buttress up the early history of Islam before Muhammad. We've seen um, confirmation that the Christian apologetic that the Quran actually confirms the Bible is actually in the early source of this biography. The idea of the prophet comes with a covenant and the covenant is ratified by scripture. Therefore, when the Christian says the Torah and the Injil are confirmed in the Quran, when the Quran says read the Injil, read the Torah, it, it means that the Injil is scripture because it comes with the covenant, with the covenant. Um, so the, old, the whole uh, apologetic that Muslims have today is completely dishonest to the reading of their own scripture uh, and just, just, just a blatant lie uh, if we take this biography, uh, what it's saying. And then just a couple of issues that I have with Muhammad through this thing that his prophethood uh, begins with these revelations where this angel grabs him, squeezes him and says read. It seems, um, you know, the prophet, <coughs> there's nothing like that in the history of, of the Old Testament. Um, it seems like a superstitious kind of event uh, to me and does not in any way prove his prophethood in any way. Um, the other thing as well is when he married his wife uh, there was a, a, some kind of monk that when Muhammad came to his wife and said, look, I've had these revelations, and she said, go to, to this monk, or to this Christian person, that in order for his prophethood to be accepted, that so-called was confirmed by a Christian. Uh, whether he was a Christian or not, or a confused Christian, or whether it actually happened, I don't know. But the point that I'm getting at is that in order for Muhammad to have authority, he had to refer to Christianity. And I think you see that in the Quran, that in order for it to be accepted, it has to deal with Judaism and Christianity. And you see that today in Muslim apologetics, they're not really dealing much with atheism or Hinduism or Buddhism, they're not dealing much with these things. They do a little bit, but they're always trying to deal with Christianity because they know that Christianity is the, the biggest challenge, one, because Christianity is the truth, but secondly, because their whole authority, Muhammad's whole authority is based on an interpretation of Christianity. And if, they, if their interpretation is wrong, then the whole thing collapses. 
So they have to write in their history that Christianity confirms them in order to buttress up their, their position. Uh, so far, so I, I've read 100 pages, I've got 300 more pages to go. So I'm going to make a diary every evening for a couple of days this week of my reading of the biography and, and what I get out of it. Excuse me, when I compare this biography to the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of Matthew or the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of John, this biography in, in, in no way comes close. It does not come close to... Um, it, it just doesn't come close to anything like the Gospels. The Gospels are, are spiritually edifying. The Gospels can be fact-checked by outside sources of archaeology and secular historians. And also, because there are four biographies, they can be fact-checked to each other. Uh, it seems to me that this is just padding with a few bits of myth and legend and a few little crumbs uh, of the real Muhammad and then embellished with false stories to give him some kind of cred credibility. Um, but in no way so far has this convinced me. It has not convinced me about Muhammad being a prophet. It kind of confirms that he's not a prophet to me, that this is all made up. But it also confirms to me that the historiography, the whole argument, one of the great arguments of Islam today, if you attack Islam, criticize Islam, the whole argument comes across, well, we, we have the chain of narration, we can trace our chain right back. Well, here is one of the earliest biographies. And even their own scholars, admit that the chain of narration has been broken, that this guy was, a, was known to be a liar. I, I'm not even bringing this up as an issue. In my discussion, I've, I've mentioned that scholars have said this, but I've not used it to batter this guy. I've tried to take him on face value. Ibn Ishaq, I've took him on face value. But, even the own Islamic scholars acknowledge that that it was a liar and that it was a broken chain. And this is the, one of the earliest sources. It's one of the earliest sources. And um, so this chain of narration, and they've invented a whole complex science which we'll go into when we're reading this book. And it's just all make-believe, it's all fantasy. There's no reality to it. And that's what you see a lot of this biography, a lot of it's fantasy, because there's all these long genealogies and all these poems. But it's fantasy because there's no actual meat, there's, there's no actual real detail. And the detail that is there is not really significant, it doesn't really tell us much about the time and about who Muhammad really was. We're just getting the burr skeleton, really. Uh, in reality. That, this is a fair review of this biography. I'm looking at it from the way historians write history today, the way historians investigate history today, and I'm looking at it from the lens of historians of the first century like Josephus and Tatisus. And this material it's not good material. It's not good material. There's issues in this material. Some profound questions need to be answered in this material. But then there is helpful information that comes across which unwittingly tells you about the time, the times of the writer and the way Islamic history wants to go and the influences on, on Islamic history. Those are my thoughts. This is not going to be of interest to many people, but it is an interest to me. I'm, I'm interested in sources. I'm interested in looking at early sources. 
early sources of Christianity, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I'm interested in the early sources of uh, Islamic history. And I've just looked at this, I really have looked at this in a very objective way. I've just given Ibn Ishaq the benefit of the doubt and I've read it with an open mind. And there are some serious issues with it. And it, and it puts a question mark on Islamic history and Islamic reading of history. And the apologist in Hyde Park have got a lot of answering to do, a lot of questions that they need to answer. And I've seen Masood, I've seen many Muslim apologists on videos say, we have the chain of narration, chain of narration is spot on, we can trace it. But just looking at this one biography, this whole argument of generation, there's big serious problems with it. As we're only looking at one biography, what is, what is it going to be like when we start getting into the other biographies? And then when we start getting to Bukhari and Muslim, what are we going to find there? It, it, it doesn't look good for Islam. So we'll go into part two tomorrow night. And hopefully I'll get to the end of the biography before I get to Hyde Park. And if anyone wants to discuss the questions that I brought up in this video, uh, please let me know. So I do this with a good heart. I don't do this to uh, just attack Islam <coughs> in the sense that I just want to attack Islam. No, I do this with a good heart. I've read this with an open mind. I've read this from a scholarly point of view, looking at the research, looking at the biography, trying to understand the biography. And I, I can only come to the conclusions that I've come to. Okay, so please don't be offended. Uh, it's your job as a Muslim to answer some of the questions, some of the issues that are brought up in this biography. And I'm willing to be corrected. I don't know everything. And I'm only learning, and I'm only learning about the early history of Islam. So I'm willing to be corrected, I'm willing to be challenged, I'm willing to have other material uh, sent to me and to read. So I'm going to lead, leave uh, the comment section open if anyone wants to PDF me any information that I need to read. If Mansoor or Muhammad Hijab or anybody wants to dialogue with me on the issue, I'm not here to put you straight, I'm here to learn and to hear what you have to say. And if you want to give me any sources that I need to go and look at, I'll go and look at. But that's what I'm finding. So thank you for listening. God bless you. Um, I'm sorry if it's boring to other people, but maybe one or two people might find this interesting. The early sources of Islam. God bless you and take care.